Koji Sato, the CEO of Toyota, paused mid-sentence as the overhead lights dimmed. The sleek form of the aqua engine now illuminated like some mythic artifact. It hummed quietly in the contained silence of the demonstration hall, seemingly powered by nothing more noble than a simple bucket of ordinary tap water. He didn't need to elaborate. The implication was clear. In that charged moment, an unspoken declaration hung in the air. This innovation could very well upend everything the EV industry stood for. Before we start, smash the like and subscribe buttons for more updates. Across Japan and then around the world, the ripples were instantaneous. Observers struggled to reconcile the familiar image of Toyota, quiet, methodical, almost conservative with this electrifying revelation, an onboard electrolytic reactor that separated hydrogen from water in real time, feeding a compact fuel cell and delivering power with no fossil fuels, no grid, no lithium, just water. A closed-loop hydrogen system, clean and almost poetic in its simplicity. The engine consumed tap, or rainwater, refilled in a couple of minutes and promised over 900 kilometers of range. The future didn't come draped in wires and batteries, it came in the elemental purity of a water molecule. Immediately, questions swarmed. How could Toyota have achieved something so revolutionary so quietly? Sagecraft was subtle yet powerful. He didn't scream that this was the end of electric vehicles, he let his creation speak for itself. The audience already understood. Refueling in two minutes with water, that alone dismantled years of infrastructure investments in charging networks, battery supply chains, lithium mining, and grid expansion. It was too elegant, too radical to ignore. Journalists scrambled for clarity. Was this a fuel cell? No. There was no high-pressure hydrogen tank, no external hydrogen station. The hydrogen was born inside the engine on demand, the only byproduct, water vapor. That meant zero emissions, zero reliance on battery materials, and no requirement for rare earth elements. It was molecular fuel, pure and simple. In the marquee corridors of the EV industry, the shock was seismic. Battery giants, once reveling in headlines about market dominance, now found themselves confronting a new paradigm. Lithium futures dipped, stock charts wavered, Tesla, BYD, Rivian, all tentatively retreated into boardrooms, reassessing strategies. Traders whispered about stranded assets, planners looked at charging infrastructure with fresh trepidation. At the same time, environmental groups erupted in applause. Here was a technology that offered a credible path toward decarbonization without further exploiting fragile ecosystems or inciting geopolitical tension over mineral mining. The possibility of mobility powered by water, a form and function fused with environmental ethics, had an almost mythic allure. At first, governments were, you know, pretty cautious, but now they've started to pivot. Regulators scrambled to define safety frameworks, and, honestly, there were a lot of questions. Was a sealed reactor that split water on board truly safe across different temperatures, altitudes, and traffic conditions? What about its use in cold climates, where water freezes? Toyota's certifications, including Japan's top environmental and road safety clearances, definitely helped reassure a lot of people, but not everyone was convinced. Lobbyists started raising alarms. If water-powered engines really took off, what would happen to economies built on lithium, oil, or even the current electricity grids? Would desalination plants need to be repurposed? Would rainwater harvesting become a new focus? And all the while, Toyota just kept moving forward, with, honestly, exceptional stealth and confidence. The aqua engines were already in production at the Higashi Fuji plant. Plans called for the first vehicles, starting with the My AQ, to roll out as early as the first quarter of 2026. But, you know, their ambitions didn't stop there. Commercial trucks and Lexus models were next in the pipeline. And with exclusive patents on the electrolytic reactor, competitors couldn't easily replicate the technology. In research institutions, the unveiling sparked a renewed focus on complementary technologies. Advances in atmospheric water harvesting, for example, could pair seamlessly with the aqua, letting vehicles generate their own water supply in humid climates. New materials for even more efficient electrolysis might push the system's performance even further, while AI-driven route optimization could help reduce energy demands to, well, the absolute minimum. The social implications were, honestly, just as significant. In developing regions, where access to fuel is often limited or way too expensive, a vehicle that could run on collected rainwater or locally sourced non-potable supplies could totally transform mobility. Farmers, traders, and rural healthcare providers could travel farther and more frequently, without the economic strain of conventional fuel costs. Mobility itself could become more equitable. 
no longer restricted by where fuel supply chains happen to be. While other automakers were betting heavily on solid-state batteries or extended-range electric vehicles, Toyota had stepped sideways into a space with little direct competition. This move insulated the company from some of the fiercest battles over battery supply contracts and charging infrastructure partnerships. It also positioned them as a supplier of not just vehicles, but of an entirely new propulsion ecosystem that others might license in the future. The atmosphere in the room during those final anticipatory hours was a palpable force, a current of energy so potent yet so controlled it felt like the calm in the eye of a revolutionary storm. This was not the frenzied, artificially amplified hype so often manufactured for tech reveals, where flashy presentations sometimes mask a hollow core. They weren't debating the science on the screen, that battle, it seemed, had already been won. Instead they huddled in small groups, their discussions laser-focused on practical deployment timelines, supply chain logistics for new catalyst materials, and the real-world engineering challenges of scaling a technology from a flawless prototype to a global standard. The question had decisively shifted from can they do it to how soon can we all adapt. Meanwhile, a different kind of energy hummed among the entrepreneurs and startup founders scattered throughout the hall. Their eyes, wide with a mixture of awe and razor-sharp opportunism, saw not just a scientific breakthrough, but the genesis of an entirely new ecosystem. The whispers that passed between them were of entire business models being rewritten overnight. Some were already sketching out the blueprint for a new logistics sector dedicated to the sourcing, purification and distribution of water as a consumable fuel, a 21st century equivalent of the oil baron but for the most abundant resource on earth. Others debated the immense potential in a new aftermarket industry, performance tuning modules, efficiency upgrades and specialized maintenance services for this new power plant. They were the pioneers already mapping the towns and roads of a world that was only just being born. Perhaps the most telling reaction, however, was that of the policymakers and regulators in attendance. They stood slightly apart from the engineers and entrepreneurs, their expressions a complex mix of awe and deep contemplative concern. You could almost see the gears turning in their minds as they mentally dismantled decades of established legislative and economic frameworks. They were grappling with the monumental implications for national energy security, environmental protocols, and global geopolitics. Fragments of hushed conversations touched on the fate of multi-trillion dollar fossil fuel industries, the future of electrical grid investments, and the colossal challenge of adapting existing fuel taxation models, the lifeblood of transportation infrastructure funding, to a world where the primary combustible was simple ubiquitous water. The entire concept of energy policy was being rendered obsolete before their eyes. This collective suspension of disbelief, this shared glimpse into a future arriving decades ahead of schedule, is precisely why what we are witnessing today is so profoundly critical. It transcends a single invention. It is the key that unlocks the door to a new world. And everyone in this room is already deciding what to build on the other side. If this deep dive into the moment that could redefine our technological future has captivated you as much as it has captivated us, please show your support by giving this video a like. It genuinely helps us continue to bring you groundbreaking content like this. We encourage you to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell, as we will be on the front lines of this story, providing ongoing analysis, expert interviews, and technical deep dives in the coming weeks and months. But the most important part of this conversation is just beginning. And it happens with you. We want to hear your voice. Please leave your comments below. Tell us, what are your thoughts on Toyota's revolutionary new engine? Do you believe it has the potential to disrupt, or even dismantle, the trajectory of the entire EV industry? Are you excited, skeptical, or cautiously optimistic? What questions are burning in your mind about the science, the economics, or the real-world implications. We want to hear from you to build a community of insightful discussion and shared discovery. Thank you for watching, for engaging your curiosity, and for investing your time with us. We are deeply grateful to have you here. Until next time, stay curious.